My name is Manan Parikh. I am uh, a research analyst at GTM Research on our solar side. I work on the global demand team, specializing in uh, Latin America solar, and uh, with a focus on kind of how Latin America plays into the overall uh, global rhetoric uh, of, of solar development. So on the global side of things, what we do is kind of observe major markets. Um, our major market coverage goes from uh, China, Japan, uh, to uh, major EU markets, India, uh, and then we kind of look at a couple of regional areas like the Middle East and Southeast Asia. Latin America is one of the fastest growing uh, regions for solar. Uh, in Latin America, you're looking at three key markets, Chile, Brazil, and Mexico, uh, with a growing emphasis on Argentina and Colombia. And one of the major drivers in these markets are utility scale uh, solar projects. And every so often, you know, in, in Mexico, we had two auctions this year. Chile, there was one auction in which solar was a part of. Uh, Brazil has had three past auctions with solar. All of these uh, auctions are providing a certain amount of utility capacity. The utility capacity is adding to the overall uh, growth of the markets there, um, adding you know, upwards of about two to three gigawatts of solar per year in some cases. Uh, when you kind of break it down further and look at the, the segmented demand, uh, we're kind of looking at a lot of really interesting uh, aspects of how the utility prices are playing into the residential and commercial uh, and industrial segments uh, and, and basically how uh, you know, some of the DG segments are going to start taking on larger chunks of the solar markets. So we're actually forecasting a bit of a slowdown in growth. Uh, ultimately there will be uh, a year-on-year -year growth uh, of, of PV demand in 2017. But in Latin America especially, you're kind of, you're kind of looking at a couple of different uh, scenarios play out in those major markets. In Chile, for example, uh, there's a big interconnection project between the northern grid and the central grid that will complete in early 2018. Uh, Brazil is, is going through a bit of a economic and uh, political sort of um, downturn and, and as a result, market itself and the economy is going to play out in a way that uh, will leave solar in and, and the projects that are allocated in solar in Brazil uh, in, in a bit of a flux. Mexico is the one where we see a lot of strong growth in 2017. So Mexico's a lot of projects from the first auction back in March will start to come online in the market there. Uh, and there will also be an opening of the wholesale market. And so there will be a lot more direct PPAs being signed between industrial and commercial players uh, with, with uh, small power producers. Uh, and especially in the DG segment, uh, there's gonna be a bit of a, a revival in the number of, of uh, customers that will be acquired by uh, installers. So what's fascinating about uh, 2017 is uh, it, it, Mexico will, will overtake Chile as uh, the, the top market uh, for PV demand, and, and we're forecasting that out uh, to, 21, to 2021, uh, where Mexico will continue to be the, the solar leader um, on a year-on-year on -year basis. In the past, uh, Chile has been the, the leader in installed capacity. Currently, Chile sits at about uh, two gigawatts total installed capacity, which is by far and away the largest in Latin America. Uh, but as, the, as I've mentioned with the slowdown uh, regarding the interconnection process that's taking place there, uh, a couple of other key markets will be able to gain ground. And so Chile, for example, will only see about uh, one to one and a half gigawatts of installed solar next year, whereas Mexico, in comparison, will see about 2.5 gigawatts of installed solar. So Argentina is, is really the rising star uh, in, in the region. And uh, as of just two weeks ago, Argentina uh, allocated 400 megawatts of uh, solar in their recent utility scale auction. Uh, there's gonna be another 200 megawatts uh, auctioned off in, in November. And all these projects are slated to come online by early 2018. And Argentina is also going through a, a similar energy transition law uh, that Mexico has gone through in, in the last couple of months and, and year. 
in that they're opening up their market uh, and, and deregulating so that they can become more of a wholesale market with independent players and more players uh, in, the, in the spectrum. So what we're seeing in Argentina is a shift from absolutely having little to no renewables uh, as part of their portfo generation portfolio to now having you know, an, an incredible amount of potential given you know, the solar resources that they have in the northeastern part of the country and the wind resources that they have in the southern part of the country. So Argentina is certainly going to chip away at a lot of demand uh, in Latin America and investment is already pouring in. Uh, they've uh, definitely uh, you know, paid back a lot of their debts. Uh, their credit rating is improving uh, as a result of that. And so a lot of international financiers and developers uh, and manufacturers are actually coming into the country and pouring in resources to have you know, a lot of these projects uh, take off. So I think uh, one of the longer term trends uh, that we'll continue to see is uh, in, in the global spectrum is uh, just kind of seeing how Latin America stacks up to uh, other major regions. So currently Latin America only accounts for about 2.7% of global demand shares uh, on a year on year basis, but we're expecting that to increase to about 6% next year and close to about 10% in 2018. Uh, to 2019. So this is a rapid amount of growth uh, for a region that, you know, uh, as of late hasn't really done as much in terms of installed capacity for PV, but they're really having a lot of policy measures put in place uh, to grow the industry out. And uh, we're especially seeing that in those major markets that I mentioned.